You know, you'd be forgiven if you thought SmackDown was at least going to be a passable, tolerable, adequate show this week. You shouldn't be forgiven, but you would be if you believed that. Because you look at last week, it was clear that they were trying to pull out all the stops. That the WWE was trying to impress Fox, that Fox was involved in the production and presentation. You had a lot of things that pointed to and said, hey, we know this is not sustainable every single week, but maybe this company is actually going to give a crap. And the show is going to be better. And it might end up becoming the A show since it's on network television. And then this week happened. And if you believe that, shame on you. You knew better. It was back to <laughs> same old basic lame ass SmackDown that you're used to for the previous months and years. That's exactly what the hell you got. Oh my god. You knew right away at the beginning of the night. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. Winner of the match gets the number one pick for their brand. Okay, at least the match has confident consequence, whatever. And then it happens. And leave it to the WWE to screw this up by having the fiend appear in the way he did, creeping up like he's fucking looking out for the cop trying to serve him the damn child support papers, pull Seth Rollins down to hell to only have Seth Rollins basically immediately appear, which invalidates the whole concept of pulling him down to hell to begin with. Just because Seth Rollins is pulling the product down to hell and pulling us all straight to hell with him doesn't mean you need to invalidate the fiend and end up burying him in mid-card hell. The best thing that happens is the fiends getting drafted over to SmackDown so that way he doesn't have to be associated with the seth is shit movement. But nonetheless, Brings up the whole question of why the hell bother with what you did Sunday at Hell in a Cell and then follow it up with what you did here and pray why I was just going to end up on SmackDown any damn ways. Wonders never cease. But the whole theme of this show on this night was all about this draft. There is nothing wrong with borrowing and lifting concepts from other forms of entertainment and other sports and kind of putting your own twist on it and making it your own. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's the way the world works. However, however, and this is so important to point out, if you're going to do that, you at least need to make it look good. But unfortunately, since we're talking about the WWE, we know that they didn't do that. This whole concept of the draft was god-awful, and horrible. And no matter how much you try to bring some NFL legitimacy with Joe Buck and Black Jay-Z Troy Aikman to the NFL on Fox crew, it doesn't change the fact that this was a steaming dumpster fire of a draft concept. The execution was horrible and it made this show really, really bad. When you're watching this show happen over the course of two hours on Friday night, you know where this is headed, and you know it's not good, and you know that the viewership numbers are going to take a dump. And they did. Is it any surprise that they lost a million viewers from week one to week two? The hell it isn't. No surprise at all. I'm surprised they didn't lose more, frankly. Could you imagine if you were just coming back into watching it after a while of being away, after what you saw the first week, now you come to week two, and this is an abortion of a show that you get. The hokey, terrible acting with the war rooms for the two networks, which in no way, shape, or form actually resembles a real damn war room, to having Stephanie McMahon come out and make the big... You know what's bad when Stephanie can't even get booed for being the cult that she is? To the point where you were releasing the list of the draft pool on your website and listing them basically in the order that you're being picked. So you're even spoiling that crap, which again brings up the whole point of why the hell would you be bothered to watch this damn show? To the point where you can clearly tell they are more consumed with building up their damn crown jewel show because just like the American government, ha ha, gotta get that Saudi money! I guess Kane versus Brock is for the WWE title now. Whoopity do. Supposed to, apparently we're supposed to believe that Kane Velasquez can't speak English. No. Thought he was born in California, but I could be mistaken. I could be mistaken. And 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 by far, 
That is one of the least worthy things to complain about, about this steaming pile of a dumpster fire of a show. This was so bad, so bad, that the one really cool or interesting thing that you got out of it was Bailey committing OJ on the damn inflatable buddies, showing her new haircut and her new look, and even by that time, some of the amusement had been gone because you could say, this is about a year and a half, two years, two, Tam, and eight. Which all comes full circle with her beating Charlotte for the fucking SmackDown Women's Championship. Well, then why the hell did you have Charlotte win on Sunday just to do this crap? Gotta hurry up and get past her daddy's record, I guess. If the stuff that you do doesn't matter, then why should the fans care? Like you look at the shit with Chad Gable. We're calling him Shorty Gable now. Shorty Gable! How is a guy like Chad Gable supposed to stand tall with that name? How is he supposed to latch onto a name like Shorty Gable and reach new heights. Get it? Get it? Ah, fuck you. I know it's corny. Still better than 95% of what the hell you saw on SmackDown. And even the Baron Corbin Shorty Gable crap. I legitimately didn't realize that Chad Gable had beaten Baron Corbin at the damn pay-per-view to where you turn right back around and here's Baron Corbin having to struggle in a 50-50 competitive match with a dude you just called Shorty. And that's the type of shorty where he's trying to sit there and make babies in every town that he's in. That potentially could be a very appealing character. That is the type of character that might actually get the dude fucking over like a lot of the hardcore fans want to believe that he is. Instead, no. You call him Shorty Gable so that way you can bury his ass. And in the process, too, what's so stupid about it, as is so often the case, Shorty Gable most certainly doesn't get help with the name change. He most certainly does not get help with the 50-50 match here because he's still lost. And ultimately, Baron Corbin, the dude you just had Wayne Kenning of the ring, fuck, he has to sit there. Guy has been money in the bank, would have been a prominent featured member of Raw for months and months and months. Is struggling with the dude that in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter two hella beads. It doesn't help him either. Like the whole Bailey heel turn is way too damn late. And it doesn't matter. It changes nothing. Smackdown this week was one steaming pile of crap. And then to top it all off, you would think a dude just lost his damn title in the fashion and the way that he did and was basically dismissed. You would think he would be pissed. You would think he would be angry. You would think he would be seething. You would think he would be seeking revenge. You would think that he would actually give a crap. But no, there's Kofi Kingston. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, sir, Fox. Sitting there playing with his fucking pancakes. Pancakes! So that way he can sit there and play second fiddle to goddamn Xavier Woods when they're putting over breast cancer survivors to try and plug that scam of an organization, Susan G. Coleman. Fuck her! And fuck that organization! And fuck the WWE for this crap. And most importantly of all, I understand it is not Kofi's fault, but there is an element of you are in that position to a certain degree. You have some say so. You can choose to not sit there and do that crap. You can. Especially now you got AEW out there. If WWE fired him, you just go there. They'd be able to pay him well, too. If the character doesn't care, why should the fans? And that's the whole premise here. Kofi Kingston is more worried about pancakes than he is the WWE Championship that he just lost. When the dude that he freaking lost it to in the fluke fashion that he did, was out there in the damn ring, and Kofi did nothing. Ooh, he wanted to do much. Nobody gives a crap! If the character doesn't care, the fans shouldn't care, and as far as I'm concerned, fuck the Kofi Kingston character now! Because getting behind him 
is an exercise of futility and a total and complete waste of time, which ironically enough is what the hell SmackDown was this week. If you thought this show was good, you lost your damn mind. You need your head examined. Head examined. Head examined. This is OTR Essential. Not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. And by God, after all the hype and the possibility and potential of last week in professional wrestling, it took one week for everybody 